Calibration is the process of measuring the output of your spraying equipment and adjusting it to apply the correct amount of chemical and water to the target. It's important to accurately calibrate so the target pest is properly controlled without harming the environment or leaving harmful residues. Calibration also enables you to prepare the correct amount of chemical mixture so the amount left over for disposal is minimised. Ultimately, calibration will save you money. There are several ways to calibrate a boom spray. The method we'll use is similar to the ones in the Smart Train Assessment Guides and Reference Manuals. Before starting, it's important to check that your equipment is ready for spraying. For example, the filters, filter housings and spray tank should be clean and all safety guards and covers are in place and securely fastened. To check there are no leaks or blockages in your broom spray, half fill it with water and run the machine at a higher pressure than you intend to use while checking the tank, valves, pipes and fittings for any problems. Stand behind and back from the rig, preferably looking into the sun while looking along the boom to check the nozzles are putting out a regular spray pattern. Any nozzles with an irregular pattern may be blocked or damaged, so they need to be cleaned or replaced. On this machine, one of the nozzles is leaking because the non-drip diaphragm isn't working properly. This will have to be checked and replaced if necessary. When you're satisfied that everything is in proper working order, you can start calibrating the boom spray. The first step is to record the capacity of the spray tank in litres and the area to be sprayed in hectares on the calibration template. Read the chemicals directions for use section of the label to find the recommended chemical rate for the pest you're aiming to control. The general instructions area of the label will have any recommendations if there's a specific water application rate per hectare or a particular pressure to set your sprayer. Record this information onto the calibration template as you find it on the label. Remove a nozzle from the boom spray and record its type and size in the calibration template. Nozzles are coded in terms of flow rates and fan angle. The numbers on this nozzle tell you it has a rated output of 0.12 US gallons per minute and a fan angle of 110 degrees. Refer to the nozzle manufacturer's chart to help you convert rated output in US gallons per minute to milliliters per minute at various pressures and record this in the calibration template. It's important to check along the boom to make sure all nozzles have the same rated output and fan angle. The boom needs to be set at a height to make sure there's double overlap of the spray fans to ensure even coverage of chemical on the target. So you'll need to determine the optimum spray height for the nozzles on the boom. It's essential your boom height is set evenly across its full width. The optimum height for this boom, which has a standard nozzle spacing of 50 centimetres, and has 110 degree tapered flat fan nozzles is 50 centimetres above the target. Record this figure in the calibration template. The three main measurements needed for the calibration calculation are total spray output in litres per minute, effective spray width in metres and actual ground speed in kilometres per hour. To measure total spray output, record the amount of each nozzle over one minute. Nozzle output can be measured into a graduated jug or by using equipment such as this tip tester that's been designed specifically for the job. Any nozzles that vary by 10% or more from the manufacturer's rated output will need to be replaced, otherwise the chemical will be applied unevenly. Enter the figures for each nozzle into the calibration template and add them together to get the total spray output. The effective spray width is determined by measuring the distance between the outside nozzles on the boom and adding the distance between two adjacent nozzles to that figure. For a standard boom with 50 centimetre nozzle spacings, the easiest method is to count the number of nozzles and divide by two. Record this figure into the calibration template. For the next measurement, actual ground speed, rather than determining speed from the speedo or the conversion placard on the tractor, it's more accurate to use a time and distance calculation. Calculate your actual ground speed by measuring a set distance, for example 100 metres, making sure the ground conditions are similar to those in the area that you'll be spraying. Then time how long it takes to cover that distance using the appropriate gears and revs with your spray tank about half full of water. 
enter the time and distance measurements into the formula to calculate actual ground speed. The figure of 3.6 is used in this calculation as a simple factor to convert metres into kilometres and seconds into hours. Now the three main measurements of total spray output, effective spray width and actual ground speed can be entered into the formula on the calibration template to calculate the spray application rate for the boom spray. This figure tells you how many litres of water will be applied to one hectare. The figure of 600 used in the calculation is to convert the three main measurements which are expressed in different ways into litres per hectare. Once you've satisfied with the water application rate and it complies with the label, you're ready to calculate how much chemical you need to mix in each tank. The information you'll need to do this is the chemical application rate recommended on the label, the spray tank capacity and the water application rate that you've just calculated. You can now work out how many litres of spray mix are needed to do the whole job. Multiply the area to spray in hectares with the water application rate you've calculated to get the total number of litres of spray mix you'll need. Finally, by dividing this figure by the capacity of the spray tank, you'll find out how many tank loads it will take to do the whole job. Remember to check the General Instructions section of the label for instructions on how to mix the chemical. For example, often a label will recommend you half fill the spray tank with water, add half the required amount of chemical to the water with the agitator on, and then top up the tank with water. When pouring chemical into the spray tank, avoid pouring above shoulder height, as this increases the risk of spillage and splash. If necessary, stand on a platform when pouring, or modify your equipment so the chemical can be transferred safely. This transfer system also has a container flushing nozzle, which will reduce the time required to clean out empty containers. You're now ready to spray, knowing you've done all you can to comply with label directions. The result is a spray job done correctly, with minimal wastage, while reducing risks and environmental hazards, simply by having an accurately calibrated boom spray.